So, we are live. Thank you so much for coming on. It's pretty surreal having you, uh, having you right here, sitting across from me just like five years ago. You were my football coach. Yeah. Just giving yeah. us lessons right before we were about to go work hard in the weight room. Man, it's, it's cool. It's cool. How you doing? How's your holidays? I'm great, man. First off, I just want to say uh, <clears throat> thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. I think it is awesome reflecting. It's funny that you started that way because that was my same reflection, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you asked me to be on. I thought it was cool. So to me, man, so proud of you, so happy for you. Thank you. Of the things that you're doing. It's a no-brainer, man. You're like, hey, coach, you want to do oh, – I'm on the way. Yes, Let's sir. get it. Thank you. So, Thank you. So, so glad to be here, man. Let's get it. So first question, I texted you this yesterday. What does success look like to you? You know, when Chip Baker – is striving for success. Yeah. What is it that you're striving for? You know, being that, like my YouTube channel podcast is the Success Chronicles. Like I'm, I'm super fascinated with success, mm -hmm. and that's one thing I've, you know, from being from a kid, I've always been uh, curious about success because I'm gonna go back on you a little bit, like the like the Drake song. I just want to be successful, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> And so I've always strived to learn different things. But to me, I think it can be abstract yet simple. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or I think it can be simple yet abstract. Gotcha. Right. And mm -hmm. so I think that it just kind of depends on where you are in your life, mm -hmm. or what your priorities are. Yes, sir. Uh, and, and when you're striving to do the things that are important to you at that moment, mm -hmm. I think that's what success is to me. Because it's, it's changed, like in different phases of my life, you know, it's been, you know, this, you know, a degree, get to college, mm -hmm. you know, those kind of things, career, like, it's been different things. So, uh, I just think that wherever you are in the phase of your life is what you prioritize that's important to you. Yeah, yeah, so success for, 20 year old Chip Baker was a lot different than oh my success gosh. for you now. Yeah, success for Chip Baker today is way different than it was last week. Mm, gotcha. <laughs> you know? Yes, sir. So, I mean, that's the goal. Yeah. Is to have that continued growth. Pretty malleable, you know, mm -hmm. be able to change. Yep. So, tell me about the impact of influence. Like, yep. what's the overall goal of that book series that you're writing? Uh, man, I smiled, huh? I, when you asked me that, I smiled. Mm -hmm. I smiled because I'm really proud of that. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, where I'm from, where I grew up, grew up with a single parent mom. Yeah. I didn't know anybody that wrote books, but, you know, like growing up, I ain't like authors, like I, I ain't know none of them, mm -hmm. right? And just to see my name on a, like on a book, a real book, <laughs> like a real book, <laughs> you know, it, it really blows me away and I'm truly grateful for that. And when I started, Mm -hmm. Kind of like we talked about with that definition of success. You know, when I started, the goal was just to be an author. Yeah. You know, um, as I went a along the journey, I saw that there was other people that wanted to be authors as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I knew people that did those things. So my goal was to set up opportunities for those people to become authors. Same. And so, you know, anything I do, I, I know that it's bigger than me. I'm going to just say, it like, it, it ain't about me, mm -hmm. you know. And so... <laughs> just to share stories, highlight others, give people opportunities in hopes to make a positive difference in our world. Yeah. 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 I mean, something I really, really like about the book and that st it stood out from other, you know, kind of success story books to me was that it was an amalgamation of a lot of different lessons from a lot of different people, you know, yeah. you have a lot of different perspectives. And I feel like as I've navigated through my own life, I found that there's never really one answer to everything. You know, there's everyone is unique. Everyone has their own unique problems. Yep. Yep. Therefore, everyone's solutions are very unique. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed how you got so many different lessons and perspectives. That being said, what was the process of creating a book like that? Like, you know, you you have yeah. so many different authors. How'd you get all those people together? To Man, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure that out myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's been cool, man. I think it's the beauty of having quality relationships. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I can track this back to, uh, you know, being a kid, growing up, just striving to be a good dude, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, you got some guys in the room, you and the guys in the room, 
I consider y'all the good dude status too, right? You know, and so when you strive to be a good dude, good things organically happen for you. Mm -hmm. And that's what it that's what it was. That's what it's been for me. Like at the time I didn't know that. It was just, you know, striving to achieve the goals, do things the right way, treat people right. Mm -hmm. But what I didn't know is when you do those things on a day to day basis, man, the good stuff organically just comes to you. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it takes a lot of work. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, for sure. Yeah. But the good stuff just happens for you and it comes to you. And basically that's how it happened. Man, like I um you know, do I speak so I had an opportunity to speak for this this group, mm -hmm. uh, and then it was a men's group virtually. Then a few months later, one of the guys in the group he did self, he does self publishing. He reached out to me and asked, "Man, you ever thought about bringing some people together and putting them in the book?" I was like, "Man, that's an awesome idea, mm -hmm. right?" And so along that same journey, you know, I was doing my podcast. So I was coming in contact with some great people from all over the world, oh, yeah. developing those relationships. And then it all kind of just came together. And most of the people, like, I asked, hey, man, I'm doing this book. They didn't even let me feel like, yeah, I'm in. Right? And so that's really how it came about. And we did the first one. And, I mean, that was, man, that was amazing. We did a 10-city book tour. Uh, I mean, like, it really blew me away. Bestseller. Uh, like, it was cool. Mm -hmm. And so different. I was like, well, let's try it again. You mm -hmm. know, and so now, you know, we continue to do all of those, those processes. And now we're on, we just dropped, man, volume six. Yes, sir. And so the Impact of Influence book series, we're up to six volumes. And mm -hmm. it all started with just, you know, trying to provide opportunities, trying to share stories, mm -hmm. highlight other people. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I like that idea of kind of like, you're doing good with your life, and you're going to attract what you put out into the yes. world, right? So For you're sure. doing a lot of good. You're in these men group, men's groups. You yeah. know, you're building quality relationships. And then all of that, in the end, kind of allows you to do this amazing book series. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, that's really awesome. What is the motivation behind the title of the book? You know, what exactly is the impact of influence, if someone were to ask you? So um, all of us have been influenced uh, by someone or something in our lives, right? And we've been influenced in such a manner that it's, that it's impacted us and caused us to be who we are today, right? And so that's really the premise behind the, the impact of influence is, you know, influential, positive influential people that have you know reflected on those people or that thing or that scenario or experience that has influenced their life and they just talk about what they learn from that the blessings and the lessons mm -hmm. if you will and then how they're using that to make our world a better place so that's the premise of the impact of influence mm -hmm. and kind of to go into your um, role as a teacher and as a coach you know from when you first started to now, it seems like you've had this incredible journey of growth. You're doing mm -hmm. so many things now. Yeah. It's really, really awesome to see. Thank you. How has your approach to guiding and teaching people changed since you first started? You know, man, that's a good. That's a really good question. Um, how has it changed? Really, not much. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think that I'm the same dude in that aspect as far as, you know, like, and I learned this as a kid, you know, there's some core common principles, values that I believe in. Yeah. Like I wholeheartedly believe in work hard, do right, treat people right, take care of business, put yourself around good people. Mm -hmm. And it don't matter what rain, shine, sleeves, I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. And so in my life, I've just strived to do that from as a kid, even to now, like it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, so those things haven't changed, but of course, like, you know, the world changes, technology, like all those things. We, you know, we were talking about some of the stuff before we started, like the technology, all the different things. Like, of course you have to learn those things to continue to grow. Mm -hmm. Right. So you don't remain stagnant. So you have that continued growth. Cause I think continued growth is important. Like, you know, how do I continue to get better and shift with the time? Because if you don't learn to adjust, a sports analogy, if you don't learn to adjust, then, bro, you're going to get your butt beat. And the game's always changing. And the game's always changing. Yes, sir. And so, you, you know, there's some core principles that I hold on to that ain't changed. But then, you know, my, my eagerness to learn 
my eagerness to be the best version of myself, mm -hmm. uh, that continues to evolve because I think when, when I feel that I'm the best version of myself, I feel that I can give the best version of myself mm -hmm. to those students and athletes and people that I'm blessed to be around. Yes, sir. I, I wholeheartedly love that. Yeah. yeah that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Um, now, with all these ventures, I mean, the podcasting, the coaching, the yeah. writing, how do you stay motivated to do all these things? Where are you sourcing that motivation from? Man, I think um, understanding that it's bigger than me, that it's not about me, uh, understanding that uh, I'm only going to have a short amount of time on this world, right? Understanding that my goal is to to hopefully have an everlasting legacy that I can, you know, pass on and be a positive influence to others. Um, you know, and sometimes people they look at legacy as a negative connotation. Like it's about me, and uh, I'm not that kind of guy. Like mm -hmm. it's not about me. Like, I know that it's bigger than me. But I definitely want to know that when I get to go visit the big man, that I've done some things uh, to help others, yeah. right? And so that is my driving force. Like on a day-to-day -day basis, like I know I got people depending on me, mm -hmm. right? And and if I don't do what I'm supposed to do, the people that I love and care about, they don't get, they don't eat, yeah. <laughs> literally, <laughs> right? And so I have to make sure that I do the things that I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm to take care of business so that the people that I love and care about will benefit. And is that something that you, like, is that motivation that you've had for a really long time or did that kind of evolve, you know, as you became a family man, yeah. as you, like, matured into the teacher that you are today? No, nah, I mean, you know, um, that started as a young guy. Um, I was raised with a single-parent mom. Mm -hmm. In a small town, parents divorced when I was five. You know, I want to make sure I say this. My father was in my life, just in a different, you know, city. He wasn't a deadbeat dad. He's a great guy, mm -hmm. but just different, right? Dad wasn't in the house, yeah. and so uh, from that, you know, I saw the struggles that we went through. I saw my mother work three and four jobs, um, you know, just 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 to provide the necessities that we needed. It was no extra, right? Uh, there was no balling out. Like it was mm -hmm. just whatever, you know. Uh, and so I, I saw her work hard, and that showed me uh, that life is important. Uh, that showed me that um, to not take things for granted. Yeah. Uh, it showed me the value of hard work, and it showed me that hard work works. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And so um, I was blessed and fortunate to see that in my family. Right? And And... I also saw, because I'm a fourth generation educator, I don't know if you knew that. So mom, grandmother, great grandmother were all educators. Mm -hmm. And so it's in our blood to do that and give service. So I come from church, I say it like down south, church folk with no S. Yes, sir. <laughs> church folk and educators. And so just the heart of service, of the heart of looking out for others and, and taking care of business, I learned that as a kid. And that's just something I've strived to do throughout my entire life and so mm -hmm. that's kind of where that drive has come from yeah just seeing that and 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 seeing what it feels like knowing what it feels like to be on the other side of that to receive that mm -hmm. right so so and I'm gonna say this to you so like you were I coached when you played yep as a coach my hope is that anytime you were around me you knew you was gonna have a good time you succeeded Check. Yeah. Right? Anytime you were around me, you knew that that guy cared about me. Mm -hmm. Check. Yeah, check. Right. Uh, you know, yeah. so, like, like I, I was intentional about that. Mm -hmm. Right? I knew what it felt like for when people gave me that. And so uh, that's the motivation was to make sure that, hey, man, that's good stuff when people do those things. I got to give that, too. Mm -hmm. Right? And yeah. so I think that, that that's one of the things that has, has truly driven me in my entire life. You're you're receiving that gift, and then instead of kind of holding on to it yourself, you're giving it to others. You can't hold on to the gift. Yeah. Your your gift is a gift. Ooh, hold on. Let me give you that one again. <laughs> hey, so so your gift is a gift, mm -hmm. and what I mean by that is the big man has blessed us all with certain gifts and talents that we innately have, or that we have worked on to develop. Mm -hmm. But but. The thing is, we have to make sure that we give that gift as well yeah. to others because, you know, as a person, we all like receiving gifts. Mm -hmm. 
right? Like it's it's one thing it's one thing to receive a gift, and that's a great feeling. Yeah. But but have you ever worked hard, did something, made money, and then bought a gift for somebody else that you love and care about, and then you give them that gift? Yeah. Oh man, that feeling far outweighs the feeling of receiving a gift. It's so fulfilling. Oh yeah. my God, because yeah. you know you put the work in. Yes, sir. Like you know it means something for you. Like I've I've done this for you, right? Just to make you happy and make yeah. sure that you're okay. That just happened to me yesterday, actually. Like yeah. I I got paid for all the hours I did before Christmas, and mm-hmm. um, I got all like the reimbursement from my travels. Yep. And I just got Christmas gifts and I got groceries for the whole family and it was it was a really great feeling. Man. And it sticks with you. It sticks with you. It's fulfilling. Yeah. And it reminds you too to just keep doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Because it makes a difference. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. I really like this idea of kind of influence and this like chain of influence. You know, mm. the hard work that your mother put in, raising you, being a single mother, yeah. that inspired you. Right. You took that gift and um, worked hard, you know, became became a pretty great man, pretty great, like very great man, great educator. And then through that inspiration, you know, then you adopted those same qualities and inspired me, you know, inspired Mm -hmm. Miles, inspired all the people you coach. And you have this chain of influence that started maybe with your mom's parents oh, or their yeah. parents, you yeah, know, yeah, and yeah. it just it just goes on and it branches out into this big, big network of just positivity. And, you know, I, I feel like I, I really like this idea of positive actions have ripple effects that you might not even realize, you know, and ripple effects through time that you might not even realize. That's it right there, Bob. Yeah. I mean, like that, that, that in the nutshell, it really, it gave me chills when you, when you explained that. And, and the reason is, is because that was something that I learned a long time ago in my life, right? Um, when I told you my background with, you know, being educators and church people. You know, there were things that my mom would say to me that was taught and told to her by her elders or people that came before her, mm-hmm. you know, and things that are like, like family traditions or different things that we do, like we have a family prayer that we do, like every time we leave, we all say this prayer. You know, and so just like, like things like that, um, that's passed down, that spread it, um, like you said, like, like you can think about, oh yeah, it's gonna be cool to leave a legacy, to be some, do some neat things, but really, like man, like how you explained it, like, like when you have a family, you have, there's some things that you've seen in me that you're gonna share with your family. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's so like, whoa! You know, like when you, yeah, you really yeah. just think about those things, like like it blows you away. But then it also makes you happy, and 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 proud of yourself because like, uh, if I didn't work hard to do the things that I would have uh, to achieve, I wouldn't have been blessed to be in a situation to be around you guys, mm-hmm. right? And so I'm truly grateful for all of that and how all of that happens. And it's a beautiful thing to watch that all like like play out, mm-hmm. you know. So, what advice would you give to twenty year old Chip Baker? Oh man, advice I would give to twenty year old Chip Baker would be just keep doing your thing, dog. Mm-hmm. You're gonna be all right. Yeah, yeah. And I and I say that because. I don't know what it is, but I think the big man kind of blessed me with some sense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like uh, mom, your mom used to say, boy, act like you got some sense. <laughs> you know, disciplinary mom. Like, boy, get somewhere and act like you got some sense. That's an old school thing, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> but, but I'm grateful that the big man has given me a sense of awareness. I'm grateful that uh, discipline was instilled in me as a young guy. Because I think that discipline allows you the freedom to be happy. Let me give him that one again, Bob. Let me give him that one again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I, I wholeheartedly believe that discipline allows you the freedom to be happy. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is when you learn to have that self-discipline and do things the right way regardless of who's watching mm-hmm. and you take care of business, man, it allows you to be in positions to where you receive the fruits of that labor, exactly like you talked about, like working, you know, 
earning a, chur- a check and I can get Christmas presents and buy groceries for the family. Mm-hmm. Like, bro, you had to be disciplined to show up to work every day. You had to be disciplined to do what you were asked to do for a long period of time, right? You had to be disciplined to work your tail off, and I've seen you do that for a long period of time to, to earn the things that you've earned so that you can take care of the people that you love, yeah. right? And so it allows you to have that freedom which makes you happy, which makes you fulfilled. And so I would just say, man, I've, I've, been, I've done those things uh, my entire life, um, but just I would just remind myself that you're, you're on the right path. Mm-hmm. Are you, you're okay, you're gonna be all right. Mm-hmm. So that's what I was saying. Yeah, uh, discipline to me creates opportunities. Without a doubt. Yeah, it creates, uh, like you said, like freedom. You know, like when you're doing the right things every day, there's just something about it to where things ease up. You know, oh. you just have this nice peace of mind. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, and it seems easy, but really it looks, it looks easy <laughs> from the outside. But really, like, you know the work you put in. Like, mm-hmm. you know the hard work. Oh, yeah. But, but you're, you're proud of that, too, and grateful for that because um, you prove to yourself that your hard work is beneficial. And I even like to say this, you know, opportunities bring opportunities. Mm-hmm. And, and, and what I mean by that is... Just like you said, the discipline creates opportunities. Man, like every every opportunity that I've had in my life, I, I can't tell you that it's been because I've been the best choice. Mm-hmm. You know, every opportunity that I've had in my life has been because somebody else thought highly of me and gave me an opportunity to do something. All right? And I'm going to share this story. You mind if I share a story with you? Yeah, go ahead. So, so, so growing up, uh, this is my favorite story to share, man. Um, uh, growing up, you know, I was surrounded in my community by some really good people uh, to 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 emulate, to watch, to see what it's supposed to be like to help leave a legacy in me. And uh, my my little league baseball coach, who was also my my fourth my he's my elementary uh, principal, my elementary school principal. He was also my little league baseball coach. Great man, um, grew up in our town, former coach. I mean, amazing. Ended up being the superintendent there eventually, in my hometown. But 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 great guy that I wanted to grow up and be like, right? And so, um, like I told you, I had those core core common principles: work hard, do right, treat people right, do things the right way. And, and what I didn't know is that people saw those things. Like pe- people saw those things that I was doing. Like, like for me, I was just in my zone, just doing what I was told and made to do. You know, like, like I said, work hard, do right, treat people right, put myself around good people, take care of my business, right? So, so, so fast forward. I'm a broke college kid. You know, graduating. You know, college play college football, and I apply for a teaching and coaching job in Conroe School District, right? Uh, and I had, ne- I had never been in the area. Um, I'm from Hearn, Texas, over by Bryan College Station, small area. And um, the principal at Pete Junior High in Conroe ISD, uh, he, I didn't know that he knew Mr. McDaniel, the guy from my hometown. Mm. That's where it gets good right here. Right. So, so he calls him, you know, reference. Hey, he's like, hey, I got this Chip Baker kid applying for a job here in my school. Tell me a little bit about him. And so that guy tells him, oh, man, he's a great guy. Like, man, he's going to work hard. He's going to do things the right way. He's going to treat. He's gonna put himself around some good people. He'd be an asset to your team. You should give him an opportunity. Mm-hmm. And, and that principal gave me my very first teaching and coaching job because of what Mr. McDaniel said about me, of what I did. Hold on. I got my very first teaching and coaching job off of the person that I was as a kid. Mm-hmm. Right, and, and I say that because, like we talked about, man, opportunities bring opportunities. Like when we're in the moment and we're doing what we're supposed to do, like those great things are going to organically come to you because you're doing what you're supposed to do. And people want those kind of people on their teams. Yeah, like they hire those kind of people in business and jobs and all that kind of stuff. You will get bigger opportunities because you are on point and doing what you're supposed to do in those moments. And so, man, I love sharing that story because 
Like man, there I can I can I can for sure say that there was more qualified people that applied for that job because it was my first job. I had no experience. Right? I can for sure say that. Mm-hmm. Like I can probably for sure say there was probably a whole lot of people out there that was better than me too at the time. Right? Now I've worked a little bit, but I've got a little better. I'm okay now after 24 years. But uh, but man, like I got an opportunity because of what. I did as a kid and what somebody else thought of me. Yeah. Yeah, that goes back to kind of what I was saying earlier where positive actions create ripple effects mm-hmm. through time that you can't yeah. even predict, right? Yes. Yes. It's just do the positive action now because you don't know the doors that it'll, it'll open for you later. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, something I wanted to ask you um, before you went on about that amazing story is what is your definition of discipline you know if you had a student come up to you and you're talking about discipline and like coach baker like i i really like what you're saying about discipline but what does that mean and, you right. know how can i be disciplined what would you say to them i think you got to win strive to win and i'm an acronym guy so i'll break that down mm-hmm. i'm sure you've heard that what's important now mm-hmm. right and so like what's important right now right what's important right now is getting your butt in the weight room and get these get these reps yeah. Right. Get through this workout today, right now. Mm-hmm. Right. And then once you do that, then now I got to move to the next thing. What's important now? Okay, I got this homework I got to do. That's due. I got to make sure I take care of that this evening. Right. Then the next thing. Okay, what's important now? Okay. Then tomorrow in these classes, I'm reflecting. Right. What did I do good on today? What do I need to be better on? You know. Then tomorrow, what's important now? I hit the ground running. Right and work on those things I need to be better on. Do more of the things that I did well on, but work on the things I need to be better. And I think when you can continue to do that process to win, focus in what's important now. It, it allows you to be um, super, super focused, right? And uh, it's a guy in this room that I saw do that, right? And and like as a young guy, I saw, I watched him do that go from being a small guy to a huge guy and get a big opportunity to do some big things, right? And I watched that guy do that, but then I also knew that in my life it was the same way. So I was thinking, oh, yeah, he going to be all right. Mm-hmm. You know, like, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, he got it, right? And it's all, about, it's all about focusing in on what's important right now. Yeah. And when you, when you allow yourself to do that, Man, just like we talked about, it's crazy how those those amazing opportunities come to you, but they come to you because you've done the dang work. Like you've been focused and you've done the dang work. And so, you know, as a young guy, I would say, I would say, hey, just focus in on on, on what what's important right now in the moment. Yeah. Like, well, of course, set your short term, set your long term goals, set your BHAG goals, big hairy audacious goals, set all of that stuff. But really. What's, what's important is what step are you taking right now to help you be the best version of yourself, mm-hmm. right? And then once you take that step and you get through that step, well, okay, well, let's get to the next one, yeah. right? And then before you know it, man, you better look back and you've gone somewhere. And then you, you can look back and be super proud of the things that you've accomplished. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I. it's going to sound contrasting to what you're saying, but... Um, on the surface, but it's not. I, I really like this quote by, I, I don't actually know if Abe Lincoln said this, uh-huh. but I saw it on like some kind of social media post somewhere. But basically, he was saying that discipline is choosing what you want most yeah. over what you want now. Oh, And it's yeah. what you, like, and I know you're just talking about what can I do right now. It's what do I want now versus what yeah. do I need to do right now, yeah. right? It's like maybe I want to do something else, but I need to do this assignment. Because if oh. I don't, then I'm going to be hurting for it later. But if I yeah. do it now, then I'm going to you know, set up opportunities for myself. I'm going to open yeah. doors. You I know? love that. Uh, and I, I love that. I love it because it is like um, I think most is, is a more sense of urgency than now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like, like there could be a couple of things that I can do right now. But what's most is what is my next direct thing that I'm going to do. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. It's like choosing that, you know, 
making incremental steps in that yeah. big audacious goal Come on. instead of kind of meandering along the path yeah. and kind of going wherever you want. You yeah. know, it's like, I love it. I got this big goal, but I got to do these things to get there. Yeah. And if I kind of mosey around and I don't go in a straight line, then, you know, I might get lost. I might not get there. That's like kind of like a GPS. Oh, yeah. Right? Like you have to put in where you want to go on your GPS and, um, you know, if you're focused in, you get to where you want to be. And sometimes, you know, life throws some some detours at you, right? And so you have to learn to adjust and reflect, have the awareness to 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 get back on course, mm -hmm. if you will, and then continue to do your thing because it's important for you to get to wherever that is you're striving to get to. Yeah, um, when life throws you detours, you know, how do you get back on track? Are there, are there things that you do to try to get back on track to what you we're like kind of originally striving for. I think when life gives you lemons, you have to make lemonade, right? And so um, in every situation that we're in, I think it's important to make sure that we, we find the good in it mm -hmm. and focus on the positives. Um, you know, learn from the, the tough stuff, right? Learn from the lessons, right? Me personally, you know, I just reflect on the situation. Uh, you know, what have I done to put myself in this situation? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, I had to look at myself first, right? Self, you tripping, right? <laughs> right, and then I think, you know, once I reflect and look at those things, then now I can say, hey, you know, this was good, uh, proud of that, continue to do that. Or I can say, ooh, Chip, you blew that. Like, man, you need to, you need to be better on that. And so it gives me something that I can work on. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of, of life, man. That's the, that's the beauty of the journey is, like, if I want something to be better in my life and what I'm doing, guess who can fix that? You. <laughs> me. <Yes, sir. laughs> right. And so, like, like man, we, we have ownership in our, in our, when we have ownership in our journey and our destiny, Man, it allows us to put us in the driver's seat of that GPS. Put that, then put the GPS in there. And, hey, let's go riding, mm -hmm. right? And it's a, it's a great journey when you do that because it's always room for growth. It's always room to learn things. Like that's like we talked about on those detours. I mean, sometimes you make like the detour may give you an opportunity to see some things you never seen before. Mm -hmm. Like like man, I didn't know. I didn't know those things were in life. Like, I'd never seen that before. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, now get back on track. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and make sure I get to where I'm going. And so, man, I just think the awareness and the reflection piece is so huge on that. I want to go back to that question I asked about giving advice to 20-year-old yeah. Coach Baker. Come on. What would you give to, what advice would you give to 30-year-old Coach Baker? You know, fast forwarding 10 years. Ah, man, if we are, let me, let me go back to 20. Mm -hmm. Like, if, if we're looking at it by years, like 10-year increments, mm -hmm. uh, 20 would be keep doing your thing, uh, enjoy yourself, experience some things. 30-year-old would be, okay, uh, based off of the foundation that you have, just continue to grow and 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 do things that helps others. And still, I would say, and you're doing the right thing. Keep doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Just reassurance. Yeah, just reassuring. Just reassuring myself. Now you you are right. Mm -hmm. Just keep doing what you're doing. Um, you know, do you find yourself kind of dipping it like like you you're almost losing a little bit of motivation to do you know these like to do these good things and mm -hmm. to promote growth and things like that. Um, do you find yourself ever kind of Maybe losing a little bit of steam and then you kind of get back up, you know, um, through time, or is it kind of just floating out of base? Um, no, but, um, you know, as I hear you say it, I think it, it reminds me of the importance of rest, mm -hmm. right? You know, like, um, you know, there was a phase where people were like, just grind, just go, like, just grind, just grind. I, I do this all day, like, no, not all day. <laughs> you know, like, bro, you got to rest so your body can recover, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think in order to, you have to work to find that balance of, okay, go hard, 
but then get rest. Yeah. And so those are things I, I would say no because uh, I've really worked hard at having balance in my life. Mm-hmm. And, and the reason is, like, it's important for me to get rest. I know that if I'm not the best version of myself, if I don't do what I'm supposed to do, then people around me suffer, the people that I love and care about. And so I've really strived to um, just take one step at a time. Yeah. Like, like not eat the whole pie, but just get a piece. Something uh, I think you might have said it too. I, I remember Coach Ramirez said it a lot, and it, I still think about it pretty often. Is He would always ask us, how do you eat an elephant? Yep. One bite at yep. a time. Yes, sir. Um, what are the things that you do to stay balanced? You know, like what are the actual actions Man, that you I, take? Um, I'm a big reflective guy. Mm-hmm. Like I, I make time to reflect, right? Um, and I think that it gives me an awareness of what I need to work on as well as it gives me a, an awareness of the things that I've done well. Right. And so um, on top of that, uh, prioritizing and organizing my time. And so I have this deal that I call I call it the balance pie. Right. And so if you you know, if you visualize with me like a pie chart, you know, the complete like the pie chart is 100 percent. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's there's 10 things in that pie chart that I have that are important to me. And I don't do anything else outside of that in my life. And so everything I do is intentional, highly focused. And so my focus is on that, you know, faith, family, you know, being the glue, personal growth, you know, all of the relationships, you know, all of those, that's just some of them. But like I intentionally work on those like daily, mm-hmm. right? And so, um, you know, if I'm, you know, not 100% on one today, then I got to pick that up tomorrow and be better. And so th- that's one of the things that I incorporated in my life and it's really worked for me uh, because it's allowed me to be like hyper-focused on what's important to me. You know, seeing as like how we talked about at the beginning of this, you asked me about the definition of success, mm-hmm. prioritizing what's important to you and working your tail off on that. Yep. And, and then when you do that, um, it'll be successful to you because it's important to you, mm-hmm. all right? And so I'm truly proud of the fact that I've been able to do that too because that requires discipline. Mm-hmm. How, how has your pie chart changed over the years? You know, have you added certain things um, as you've kind of gone through life? Um, not really. Mm-hmm. Um, I hadn't really, uh, it's just like the core common principles that I talked to you about. Mm-hmm. Like the pie chart is, you know, incongruence with that. Yeah. So those are the things that I believe in and I'm going to do those things, rain, sleet, or snow. Yeah. Right. Now within that, there's some techniques or like we talked about how t- technology changes or things changes. Mm-hmm. There's some things within that that I can learn. And that's the fun part. Right. I can learn to help me be more efficient. Mm-hmm. In that, but like my faith, I'm gonna work on my faith. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on my faith. You know, mm-hmm. I'm gonna work on making sure my family is good. Like I'm gonna do that, right? Now within that, there's some creative ways uh, that I can do. You know, as far as faith, you know, like the typical church service, you know, men's group, reading the Bible, you know, all of those different things. Now, you know, you got, you know podcasts were about like it's so many different things so like it's the same Mm -hmm. but how I get to it can be different if that makes sense that makes sense yeah Yeah. tell me about go get it Mm -hmm. you you have it on your shirt right now what does it mean to go get it man I perk up a little bit let's go man I think uh, for me I I believe well let me go back it's part of positive self talk for me right so throughout my life, I've, I've exercised like self-talk. The most important relationship that you're probably going to have is the relationship you have with yourself, mm-hmm. right? And throughout my years, I've, I've had positive self-talk, you know, depending on the phases of life that I was in, you know, up your game, get better, you know, just different things that I would say to myself to push myself. And so um, once I graduated college, like I knew that, and going into a career 
striving to get you know, my master's degree, starting a family, uh, like all of those things, like those are big, big, big things, right? And so, you know, I set my goals on, okay, by this age, I want to have my master's. By this age, I want to, you know, so I kind of set my goals. And in order for me to, to, to make those things happen, I had to go get it. Yes, sir. Right? And so that was really my, my positive self-talk. I would just say that to myself. And then when I started teaching and coaching, you know, I, it would slip out and I would say it to my guys. Mm -hmm. Right? So then they would start, sometimes they would say it back to me, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And then it just, over years, became a thing. And, you know, that's just my thing, man. Just just go get it. I believe that no significant success is just going to come to you. I believe that you have to go get it and make it happen. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and in that uh, striving to go get it, in that striving to do great things, like we talked about already, organically you're going to achieve some things that you never ever would have thought you would have been able to achieve and all of that stuff that we've talked about today mm -hmm. is a part of that the book series the podcast you know the whole life journey like mm -hmm. the making a difference like man i never would have like as a kid like imagining dreaming like i that none of that was in the plan like i i, I didn't have a clue that any of that could be done mm -hmm. right but it has been because I've just strive to go get it. I, I really love that idea. I can testify from my experience that, you know, getting after it, you know, yeah. whenever I go get it. Um, yeah. I, I love that. I love that saying. I could say it over <laughs> and over and over again. But, you know, when I work hard at something, it opens those doors like we were talking about earlier. And you kind of shift the goal, like the goalpost change. Mm -hmm. Like as you're moving forward toward the touchdown, you know, like that goalpost is moving backwards. And I find myself like coming up with dreams that I didn't even think I could ever do yeah. a couple years ago. Like I, it was not part of the plan at all. And all I did was just work hard. And then I found myself in situations that. You know, I really shouldn't be in, but yeah. you know, okay, yeah. like this is Let's cool. Let's get it, baby. Yeah, like uh, yeah. the first time, like when I got, like uh, I have a research job at UT, and it was really surreal. Like I, I just worked hard. I tried to get as good a grades as I could, and when I got in, um, it was like a table kind of like this, and um, my boss was talking here, and this was like my first. Yeah, first semester of college. Mm -hmm. And personally, I really don't think I should have been there. But I was sitting here. <laughs> I know this feeling also. Weird. Yeah, yeah. It's a PhD here. Yeah. PhD yep. there. Yep. Like a grad student. Yep. Of, of, like he got a master's. He's about to graduate yep. with a PhD. Yep. Like where you're sitting, there's a senior researcher. He's been researching for like 40 years. Yeah. And, yeah. and I'm sitting there like, okay, I got to work hard. Because mm -hmm. like I don't feel like I belong here. But... The goalpost changed, and I like as I got into that situation, I kind of applied the same mindset that I was learning way back in the day in football, you know. And I was just like, I, "Okay, I gotta work hard right now, right here." And then yeah. you start to come up with all these little dreams. Yeah. Now that you're in your new situation that you couldn't, I couldn't have thought of a couple of years back. Man, first I want to say, man, congrats on that, and I'm so proud of you. Thank you um, for achieving all the amazing things that that you've achieved. You know, I've always seen hard work in you. Right. Thank you. And Appreciate so it. it's it's always it's always satisfying to see when we can take those things that we learn through sports, through life experiences, and translate those and use us to help us be successful in life, in career, oh, yeah. in family. Right? And so it's the same concept. Like uh, as you were saying that I was thinking about you know, watching you guys squat, <laughs> you know, like the squat days, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and just like, like you have to shift your mindset. Like that's some dang tough stuff. And we demanded that you do it perfect. Oh, yeah. Right? Like we didn't say, hey, let's go to the weight room and squat. Mm -hmm. No. Get your butt under the bar. Yeah. Get down there low. Yeah, like yeah, do all yeah. of those things. Right? And so like that's the a, that's a difference, mm -hmm. right? And in life, when you attack the bar yeah. in life like that, like, man, anything is possible. Mm -hmm. Like, like anything is achievable and you show yourself that. And I think it brings about a confidence in you too, because you see that, man, you learned that 
man, this this room is different. There's some ballers in this room. Mm -hmm. But hey, guess what? I'm mm -hmm. in this room too. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, like, yeah. like I'm. Oh wait, I might I might not be the top baller, but I'm in this room too. Mm -hmm. And so you know, just like in college, and this was self talk for me in college. Um, you know, you either like the choices was up your game. The choices was up your game, Thank you. or the choices was up your game or go home. And going home ain't a choice, right? So I'm, we gonna get better. I'm gonna up my game. Yes, sir. And so that's the approach when you learn that mindset. That's what you do. Yeah, I like playing sports was so so big for me, and just kind of like. I still like whenever I hear someone say Big Five, it just sets off a long. Time. I'm like, what did you say? What did you say? I was just talking about this with Miles yesterday, but it was like, um, man, it, it was just so influential. Like it really teaches you that, like, <laughs> like you just like um, with enough hard work, yeah. and if you really just attack the day, yeah, something that's really really difficult effort. it was so hard at first mm -hmm. and especially like you're doing like you're already doing squats and then someone half reps and you just hear squat jump position no whistle blows it's just like oh my gosh dude um it, it teaches you that something that's really really hard at first can get easier yeah and it can get easier with enough work and if you yep. just attack the day yeah. every day for a while yeah, just you know, keep showing up yeah. Do what you can do right now. Do the best that you can do right now. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about your belief. I mean, you mentioned this in the impact of influence, mm -hmm. that we're the sum of our environment, relationships, experiences, and actions. I mean, we could go through each one. Oh, man. Let's start with environment, you know. Uh, man, that's good. First, first I want to say thank you for... Um, doing the research on that and checking that out um, of course because that that is my life experiences and so i'm a simple guy i'm a formula guy and i think the sum total of who we are is our e e plus e plus r plus a right and that's what i share in the book there um but i think the first thing is is environment <clears throat> right so environment is you know what you've been around what are the things that are around you that you can learn from? What have you learned from being in those environments, right? So for me, my environments, you know, born in Dallas, Texas, parents separated, moved to a small town, Hearn. So now just off of that, I've seen both worlds, small city world, fast life city world, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, I've seen some different things so those are some just growing up environments, then my college environment, then my environment in my career. So there's so many things that I've learned from that environment piece that I can take and hold on as lessons. Yeah. Right. And then it goes to the experiences. And so uh, within those environments, there's some experiences, man, that like there's some things that I've seen I still don't talk about today. Uh, because they were tough in the family or, you know, tough, just things that I learned from that I said, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Like, I'm a, it's going to be better for our family, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, some of, the, and, and, you know, bad as well as good experiences. You know, I've seen, you know, like you know, my grandmother achieving some really neat things uh, or, you know, my mom, like, creating these certain... So I've seen some good things too, right? So those are some of the experiences. And then you go to the relationships, and um, I'll share this quote with you, quote guy. I heard this from one of my, my former pastors, and, and it's even in the book too. Life moves uh, at the speed of our relationships. Mm -hmm. And you think about that, you know, those people that have, that are doing great things, they have great relationships in their life. Those people that need to be doing better, they probably need better relationships uh, in their lives. And so you have to learn from those relationships. You have to pour into those relationships, make deposits so that when you need them, you can make withdrawals. Right. Um, and.
and 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 be grateful for those relationships. Mm-hmm. And then the last thing is actions. The A is actions. Yeah. You know, what are the actions that I've taken that have moved me forward? What are the actions that I've taken that have held me back? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that I've had to learn from. And so I think that when you combine all of those things, your E plus E plus R plus A, it makes you the sum total of who you are. Mm-hmm. Now, the great part in this is that helps you with the reflection piece. Okay, so now how are you going to take those things that you learned and use those to be a blessing to others, right? And so I can tell you, like, I'll share this with you. So, like, as a as a coach, as a teacher, as a as a person that strives to be a positive difference maker in the lives of others. Um, I knew what it felt like to have pain as a young kid, grow up in a single parent home, mm-hmm. right? So guys that I've taught and coached, like I can see that on them because I know what it's like, right? And so I can relate to that. Like, bro, you don't care about math. Like, you just like, did you did I eat today? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, are you good? Okay, you good. Well, then we good. We can move on. You know, like those mm-hmm. things. And so, like, I know what it feels like for people to look out for me and say, hey. Have you eaten? Like, you good? Like, you know, I know what that feels like to receive that. Mm-hmm. And so enabled, I was able to give that because of my E plus E plus R plus A. Mm-hmm. I was able to give that and be a blessing in my career. Yeah. And so that's the sum total of who we are. And that's what that's what that's about. You know, for someone that is maybe not in a great environment mm-hmm. or they haven't had the best experiences, you know, how can they use the other half of that, you know, their um, relationships and their actions to kind of put them in a better place? Because a lot of environment mm-hmm. and a lot of experiences Sometimes is out of our control. control. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think that the beauty of that is even though there's some things you can't control, you can still find the good in every situation, right? And the good can be like, Man, this is so bad that I know for sure I'm not doing this. <laughs> you know, that's the good. The good thing about a bad relationship is that it shows you what you don't want, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, man. man yeah. You're like, oh, no, you crazy. I ain't doing that. <laughs> like, man, girl, please. Like, oh, man, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm just being, you know, yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. girl, <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, you know, just like it teaches you like what you don't want. And mm-hmm. so like there's always opportunity to even in the worst situation is really I think you just have to focus on and find the good. And when you can find the good, just like we talked about, just taking those little steps at a time mm-hmm. to stack the successes. Yep. Right. And then when you take the little steps to stack the successes, you gain momentum. And as you gain momentum, you learn that, like, oh, yeah, what I'm doing is okay. Mm-hmm. Like, it reassures you. Um, yeah, I'm glad that, like, I was able to say, yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> you know, I'm glad to say, yeah, I don't want to be, nah, I'm okay. <laughs> you know? That, yeah, that's, that's perfectly in line with uh, my kind of idea of, you know, confidence and and the willingness to be able to go out and do things. Like, confidence to me is momentum mm. and you build it over time with i mean you could start with little actions you know you make that. your bed every morning i love that you're gonna feel confident you know yeah. like you're you're not gonna like automatically feel confident you make your bed every morning but you're gonna feel more confident than if you didn't right and if you keep stacking those little the little positive actions yeah. then the big things become way way easier like if you're able to be consistent with yourself and it kind of goes back to what you're talking about, the most important relationship in your yeah. life is with yourself, right? If you're able to be hold yourself accountable yeah, and be man. able to trust yourself and be consistent, and, you know, when you say you're going to go do something, you know, you actually believe that you're going to do it. Like if someone, if someone told you, I'm going to make my bed tomorrow and I'm going to brush my teeth and I'm going to do all this, I'm, I'm going to study for three hours and be on my schedule, and then they don't do it, you're going to lose a little trust in them. Yeah. So it's the same thing with yourself. You know, like if you tell yourself you're going to do all that and you don't do it, you're going to lose a little trust in it. You're going to lose a little momentum. You're going to lose a little bit of confidence. But if you do it that day, 
you build the momentum and then it's harder to slow you down. Then if you have a bad day, you're still barreling forward because you have the momentum that you gained. Man, it's so many, it's so many things. I love that how you say there's so many things that, that come up for me as I heard you talk about that process. I think the first thing is um, you don't have to prove anything to anybody else. You got to prove it to yourself. Yeah. Right? And then once you prove to yourself that you can do those things, it does build that momentum. You know, now you show that I can show up again tomorrow and kill it. Right? And then <clears throat> from, from there, I think also just kind of reflecting on what you, you hit on, man, it, it's, it's crazy how, um, I don't know, just so many great things come when you do that. It allows you to eliminate the clutter. Right? And when I say clutter, like the, the noise, I'll tell you this. So in y'all's prime, they made these uh, headphones that they, they you put on you, they're kind of big, you put them on your ear, right? And then you put on your ear, like you hear nothing else but that quality sound, mm -hmm. noise cancellation, right? And so when you allow yourself to be disciplined and focused in on what you do, you organically have noise cancellation mm -hmm. in your life and you're super focused and all of that other stuff don't matter. Yep. Like I'm a music guy, like I love listen to quality music, like listen to the background of this, to that, because, you know, my background, my family's music, so, like, I can hear, like, the ad-libs and the, all the different things in the quality music, and it's a beautiful experience when you allow yourself to do that, right, and it makes you proud, so I was thinking about, you talk about just making the bed, like, you may not want to do that and brush your teeth or whatever, but then when you come back at the end of the day, after your busy day, you come in that room, you see your bed's made, like, that, like that's you're you're proud of that. Like man, mm -hmm. that's that looks good. Yep. All right, and it's a simple thing, but I think it starts you in the process of eliminating the clutter. Oh yeah, yeah. That's exactly like I remember my mom was kind of uh, she was having a bit of a low point, mm -hmm. and I just told her like just stack wins. Yeah, like man. it doesn't have to be big, you know. Just like yep. do like like. If you know she was out of work and she was going through a tough time, is like just do do one do one job like job application today. Yeah, you know, make your bed. You know, go for a walk. You know, because if you do these little things, then you just feel better. And then yeah. you like you said, like you gain the momentum. And, yep. And you know you you just like the more positive actions you take, it's like contagious. Like you just bring more positivity into the world and then you bring it and, and it reflects back. Yeah. <laughs> and exactly. you spread that too. Yeah. Like it's infectious. Can you explain to me why consistency is so important? And because um, you talk about, you know, discipline creates good, or good habits create discipline. Yep. Discipline creates consistency. Consistency builds trust. I, 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 but I you own it, man. You know, <laughs> you did your research. I love it, man. Thank Let's you, thank go. you. If someone asked you, you know, a football player or anyone, yeah, yeah, yeah. just like, how do I create consistency? Yeah. What would you tell them? Just keep showing up. Uh, really just like what you just said, just stack the wins. Yeah. Show up today, win today. Win the moment today. Um, I think when you can do that, you, you stack those things. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a process. It starts with those habits. Um, <clears throat> You know, habits build the momentum to, to give you the trust, all right, the consistency, and then the consistency builds trust, you know, and so what happens is, you know, people around you trust that you are dependable, mm -hmm. right, but what's more important is that you show yourself that you can do great things and you trust yourself to do those things, just kind of like you talked about the scenario with your mom, I mean, mm -hmm. just, <clears throat> just do something right now where you show yourself, oh, I can. Yeah. When you show yourself that you can, um, that gives you footing, if you will, a firm foundation to build on to stack those wins. And when you said the word stack, mm -hmm. like, like to me, stack just sounds strong. <laughs> you know, like, like when you stack something, like it just sounds strong. Building a house. You know, yeah, brick firm brick. foundation, man. You got to start off the foundation and then build. Right? And when you stack those things, uh, you become strong. Mm -hmm. 
I want to talk about your podcast a little bit. Yeah. And just, you know, you said you said earlier eight years now. You're eight years deep. Man, eight years. That's impressive. Yeah, it's you know? crazy. I'm talking about stacking. <laughs> so being eight years deep, having yeah. 351 episodes. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. What are some of the, the best insights that you've got from that? You know, like what are some of the, the greatest ideas you've had from interviewing that many that many people? Oh man, I've I've learned so much. Um man, just amazing, you know, you being a quote guy, just so many quotes from different people. Um I think the beauty of because I'm a relationship guy, the beauty of meeting great people and building and establishing those relationships. Uh, that's been cool for me, um, but I think the underlying factor, because it's the Success Chronicles, I think the underlying factor <clears throat> is, and it's funny because like, like I have a Success Chronicles, and you sent me the question, like the first question you asked me is, what's your definition of success? Mm -hmm. And like I'm thinking to myself, man, that's difficult, right? <laughs> like, uh, but I ask that same question every episode, mm -hmm. right? And and it's difficult. Uh, because there's so much that goes into it, but I think the underlying factor is, you know, none of us are immune, I don't care who you are, none of us are immune from growing through tough things. Yeah. Catch that? None of us are immune from growing uh, through tough things. And so what we have to do is, you know, learn the things, go, grow through you go through, uh, you know, and on the other side of that, learn what you're supposed to learn so that you can overcome that to get to where you want to be. Grow through your go through. Mm -hmm. I really like that. Yeah. You know, I I do want to ask you, you know, some, when I look at some of my friends and some of the people that I see, I, I see them going through tough situations. Yeah. Um, me, myself, will go through yeah. tough situations. And... Sometimes I see that they they grow from it or I grow from it. Sometimes it's just tough. And and sometimes yeah. sometimes you know they're they're hurting for a while because of it. Yeah. Or you know, maybe they didn't go through it at all and they're in a worse place. So can you talk to me a little bit about like is there a certain mindset that you need as you're kind of growing through your go through in order to be able to do that, you know, like um what kind of attitude do you need to bring in order to actually grow from something hard and not just have it be adversity that doesn't get you anywhere? I'm glad you asked that question. And I won't go too deep. I got a family member that uh, is, uh, this last year has been going through some pretty tough things, right? And um, there's, there's two questions that I pose to that family member, either daily or every couple of days, what are you grateful for? What did you learn today? Right? And so if we can have the mindset of being able to kind of pause and realize that, like, man, this is tough. Um, I'm not able to do this. This happened to me, but I'm still here. I'm grateful for that. I'm living. It's a whole lot of people that's not living, mm -hmm. right? Um, I may not be able to eat steak, but I have a sandwich. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm eating. There's a whole lot of people that's not eating. Yeah. Right. Um, it, it, you know, I may my house may not be as big as I want it to be, mm -hmm. but I have a house. I have shelter. Yeah. Right. It's a whole lot of people that don't have that. Mm -hmm. So I think the first thing is you have to focus in on first. Consider like what are you what are you grateful for of what you do have and that allows you to get your butt in line yeah. and know that it could be worse. Yeah. And then the second thing is, man, what did I learn from this tough situation? Yeah. Right, from this thing that just happened to me, which which may be out of my control. Mm -hmm. Like we talked about, like like I may not have any control over any of this that's going on, but the things that I do have control over, like, like what, did I, what did I learn from that? Well, the first is don't put yourself in that situation. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like today, like, like get yourself from around them crazy people, you know, mm -hmm. like don't do drugs, you know, like just mm -hmm. different things. Like what did I learn from that? And so I think when you can understand what you're grateful for, figure out what you've learned, 
And then, I mean, I just keep going back to the stacking. Then the next day, put that into place. Mm -hmm. Put that into play. I mean, I'm grateful for this today. I learned this yesterday. I'm not going to do that today. Mm -hmm. And it really is that simple. Yeah, I really like that idea of just being grateful for what you have. Something, an idea that's really helped me go through some of the stuff that I've gone through in yep. the recent years is that um, out there, there is someone who's going through what you're going through, but worse. They have it worse, and they're doing better. Come on. And it's like, I, 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 I want to be careful because I don't want to say that in any way that like demean someone no, or kind of no, you know like no, makes no. makes it seem like your problems aren't that big a deal no, it's yeah. more of kind of like there's someone out there that's going through exactly what you're going through or they've been through it in the past yeah. and they got through it and they're doing good and it's empowering to think like man like what i'm going through like there's people going through a lot worse man and they're doing all right and they had their own success stories it allows you to be so grateful yeah like 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 but i'm not just saying those things man those are things that i've had to do growing up as well you know there's some tough things that we went through in my family or things that i've seen and i really had to say okay like what am i grateful for okay. like okay i learned this lesson i saw this Ooh, I can make it better, right? And so that's not a putting people down. It's not a derogatory thing. That's just helping with awareness to help you be grateful for what you do have mm -hmm. to, to, to shift your perspective because how you view what you do determines how you do what you do, yep. right? And so if you're focused in on just continuing to strive to get better and be positive and find the good, Will you continue to be better mm -hmm. and be positive and find the good? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I read a book recently called Call Me American. Mm -hmm. And it's about a uh, Somali guy who grew up during all the wars. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I was reading it, it was like I was going through a pretty fresh breakup. Mm -hmm. And so I was pretty down about it. And I remember reading that book and I was just thinking like, what if I just like told this guy about what I was going through? Like, what would he say? He would be like, you were able to have a girlfriend? You know, like I grew up yeah. in a war zone, dude. Yeah, like yeah, right. I had to yeah, dig yeah, a yeah. hole yeah, and sleep yeah. in it so I wouldn't get hit by shells at night. Like, yeah. um, and, it, and it, it, you would think it makes me feel like, okay, why am I getting so down about this like thing? If it's pretty small and there's people going through such hard things, but it's more like, like, I should be grateful for even being able to have experiences oh, like that, man. you know, because some people, yes, they can't even live their, their life, you know, it's just like, uh, they're just a victim of, of horrible, horrible circumstances that they can't control. So, you know, even if I'm going through something tough, just being grateful for like, I have control over what I can do, you know, like my external environment isn't you know dictating what i do uh, and it's just like i have a choice right now uh man i think that's the biggest thing that helps you get better is understanding um what i have control over and what i don't have control over yeah i think just just that right there just saying that just gave me put me at peace mm -hmm. you know just because you think about like like there's some things that's gonna happen that will happen that has happened yeah Bro, I have no control over, right? So, so why should I waste time worrying about something like I have no control over that, right? Now, if there's something I do have control over that I can put in the work or say something or do something to make it better, then now that's different, right? And if I can control that and uh, have ownership in that, then now I, I can put in the work. Yeah, I'm I'm able to put in the work to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm a pretty big philosophy fan, mm -hmm. and I like Stoicism a lot. Mm -hmm. And in Stoicism, they're always talking about, you know, just focusing on what you can control. You know, if something's out of your control, then it's kind of just the natural order of things. Yeah, and things are just happening, and. If you focus on what you can control, then you're going to be happy because, you know, things out of your control are fickle. 
you know like people you know you can't That's control a good people word right there fickle yeah like they it's very up and down here or there yeah you know you can't really control what someone else does or yeah, what they're yeah. thinking what they're saying you can't control i don't know the weather yep. external events yep but yep. you can control you know what am i going to do in this situation what are my actions yeah. and then how am i going to perceive this right yeah fickle just sounds fickle yeah <laughs> right <laughs> stacked sounds strong mm. fickle sounds fickle yeah. <laughs> i love it man it's good so talk to me a little bit about your core values you mentioned earlier there was um, quality relationships and I, I think there were a few others yeah yeah i just um so <clears throat> as far as like my core common principles you know work hard do right treat people right put myself around good people i think that those are the the core essence of of who i am and what i strive to do on a day-to-day -day basis mm -hmm. and then you know with the balanced pie you know just faith family uh you know being better in my career having quality relationships building those uh being the glue in every situation i'm in holding things together um just off the top of my head, those are just you know six or seven of those things. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> personal growth is on there as well. So I think when I can work on those things, uh, it gives me a, a, a focus, uh, a GPS, if you will, mm -hmm. to go in the direction that I want to go. Those are the things that I can control. Yeah, yeah. What exactly do you mean by being the glue? I mean by what I mean by being the glue, I'm going to give you a personal example that you can understand. So I know that as a coach, uh, in anything you do, you want to provide excitement and motivation. Mm -hmm. And so um, in every situation, I strive to be, figure out, okay, what's needed. Like I'm observant of, okay, what do we need here in this situation, mm -hmm. right? And so... It was important for me to stand at the door every day and give you guys five as you go in the weight room oh, every, yeah. every day, mm -hmm. right? And that provided that was being the glue because I knew that like you were going into some 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 tough stuff, mm -hmm. right? I mean, like like just challenging tough stuff. But how we attack that tough stuff determines the outcome of what you're going to get for that mm -hmm. tough stuff. So if I can be there to provide some encouragement as you're going into that and some motivation to help you be excited about attacking it, mm -hmm. then that's being the glue. Right? And that's a real situation right there. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. Right? And so that's why I brought that one up. I just think that in any situation, if you can have the awareness to strive to be the glue, mm -hmm. just that in itself um, helps you make things better. Yeah. And puts the, the focus not on you. Like, it's not about, like, that wasn't about me. Like, that was about just helping. Mm -hmm. like, I just want to help, be of service. Awesome. Yeah, I really love that. Hey, Miles. How long? What's the, what's the time? One thirteen. One hour 13? Yeah. Cool. You still, you good to go? Keep I'm, going? I'm good, man. Awesome. Let's yeah. get it. So you mentioned quality relationships. How do you go about building quality relationships you know what's what's your what's your bread and butter with that ah uh, i think the 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 i think quality relationships the foundation of that is respect right from the respect comes proper communication mm -hmm. right and from proper communication uh is is effort and intentions, yeah, right. And so, um, when I say respect, what I mean is, like, if we're in a relationship together, like, I need to show every moment of every day that I respect you, uh, you know, and respect your thoughts and opinions. And this is any type of relationship, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> and then from there, uh, because I respect you and what you're about and who you are. I have to communicate properly to you, mm -hmm. right? And I think that me communicating properly to you shows the respect. Um, you know, 
I'm on the way. Uh, ETA is this. Mm -hmm. I've arrived. I'm at the door. Right. Those are the that's the communication that you and I had this morning. Oh, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And I communicated that with you because I respect what you're doing and I respect your time. Mm -hmm. You had to choose to have me on your podcast, mm -hmm. but you did. Yeah. Right. And I'm grateful for that. So my respect to you is, hey, I want to make sure that I'm prepared. I want to make sure that I give you everything I can give you. Mm -hmm. Right. Proper communication, yeah. which shows you my effort. Mm -hmm. Right. And when I've given you my effort, that shows you that's important to me. Mm -hmm. right? I'm not just here. Like, just giving you fluff, like, just going through the motions. I'm giving you my A game, mm -hmm. right? That's my, that's the effort piece. And then from there, it shows you that my intentions are pure-hearted. Yeah. It shows you that my intentions are of, for good. My, I have no ill will. Like, uh, and I think when you can do those four things, respect, communicate, have great effort, uh, have good-hearted intentions, I think, man, that's how you have quality relationships. Yeah. And, and really, that's about service. That's about giving. And I think I believe that when you um, strive to give, you will receive uh, way more than what you strive to give. Right. Like when you're when you're striving to give in a manner of like, oh, I'm going to give this so that I can get this. Like, mm -hmm. no, not like that. What I mean is. Like, bro, I just want to. I just want to be of service and give, mm -hmm. right? And I think that when you do that without trying to control all or whatever, like, man, it's gonna come back to you tenfold. And my life has been that way, mm -hmm. you know. In striving to give, I've had so many quality relationships. I had so many people look out for me um, and give me opportunities because of those things that I talked to you about. That I've strived to give them. Yeah, like I'm not, and people can see that. Like people can, they can read through BS mm -hmm. all day. Like, like you know, like, I mean, he just doing this because he's trying to get. Like, no, nah, I just, I just want to serve and give mm -hmm. and, and be a great dude. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Like, kind of not, not having internal motivations or um, kind of selfish desires yeah. about yeah. you know getting something in return from what you're doing. You know, if you're gonna do something nice, just do it. Just do something nice. Yeah, because you're gonna get the reward, like 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 we were saying earlier when you know you're buying gifts for your family. You work hard, you get yeah. a gift for your family. That feeling that you have inside is more valuable than really anything they could do for you. I feel like because you have like this internal peace of mind. Yeah, your your gift is a gift. Yeah, your presence is the present. I like that. Your present is the present. Yeah, like yeah. just being present in the moment. Your presence. Mm -hmm. Like that that's the present, man. Give yeah. that to people. Yeah. How did how do you go about organizing your your time? You know, like like say yeah, you got a podcast to do yeah. on Wednesday and then you have, you know, a deadline for right. a right. new book you're writing right. coming up and you gotta delegate your time because you also gotta teach and then yeah. you gotta coach and do all these things, you know. What are you doing? Man, that's good. That's a good question because I think that's the key to us moving efficiently and effectively is first off prioritizing, but then organ organizing. Mm -hmm. So prioritizing and organizing are, are, are critical uh, to moving efficiently and effectively. And so I, I think it's important to make sure that we, uh, first off, prioritize what's important to us. And we've kind of talked about that core common values, mm -hmm. the balance pie, you know, those are the things that, that we talked about as far as, um, you know, being on point with that. But then I think the next phase is, you know, have systems in place. Yeah. It's important to have systems in place that work for you. Mm -hmm. So like for me, I'll just tell you, the system that I have in place is like, I, I make time for reflection. Yeah. So like in the evening, I reflect every evening, okay, how was my day today? Did this, did that, what can I be better on? What did I do well? Then I plan my day and like I legit have like sticky note, big sticky note or notepad or whatever to do list for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Right. So then I legit write that down. I even break it down on the disc. So I do a work list. I do a personal list. Mm -hmm. Right. So on work. OK. These are the things I need to work on tomorrow. Personal. These are the things that I need to work on tomorrow based off of my balance pie. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and then from there, 
I hit the ground running the next day, and it allows me to check those things off or, you know, write a line through them, and I know they're going to do when it's done. I throw it mm-hmm. away. I start the next day. Yeah. Right? So that's a immediate organization thing. But then the next phase is uh, highly reliable on my calendar. Yeah. Right? If I don't put stuff on my calendar, it's good. It's not being done. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, like, my day-to-day stuff, I use checklists to organize. Yeah. But if I know it's far out and it's coming along, then it goes on my calendar on my phone. And along with making that list, and checking it twice so I can find out who's naughty or nice. Oh, wait, that's not, wait a minute. <laughs> but, uh, no, it, it, on top of the quote for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on top of the, psh, that's how you do the sound effects. Yeah, yeah. yeah on top we'll, of add, the, we'll add it into the audio. Okay, okay, oh, okay. all right. <laughs> <laughs> now, on top of doing like the list thing, I check the calendar daily mm-hmm. with that. So I know, so I see what's coming up. So that allows me to, like, if I know I have something coming up in a week, I need to start preparing. I can put that on my list to prepare. Mm-hmm. And I think that those are just things that um, that I do that allows me to be more efficiently. And so, like, in my life, having those conversations also with those people that I'm doing life with, mm-hmm. right? You know, okay, what do we have this week? Yep. You know, what are we planning? Like, this, you know, so that all of that goes into account, too. So that's what I do to help me. Mm-hmm. And are you using that to manage your time and also to remember things? Oh, yes. Definitely remember. Like, as a young guy, I can remember a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Right? As an older guy, you get more hats, more responsibilities, more yeah. things you have to do. And there's no way I'm going to remember all of that. Yep. And I think that that's one thing. As a young guy that I wish I would have done earlier is write stuff down, uh, you know, keep a track of some of those things. Mm-hmm. Which will, I mean, and I, I was pretty good. I was decent, but it would it would have allowed me to be a lot better. I think, mm. right? If I'd have done that earlier, like I didn't really learn that till I kind of got into my career, because it was so much coming at me. Yeah. Right. Like I could manage it in college. You know, ball assignments. You know, I ain't had no bills. You know, all of that kind of stuff. But then, like as you you know get a family, career. You know, bills, like all of those other things. Like, there's no way I'm going to remember all of that stuff. Like, no way. Yeah. Right? And so I had to have some systems in place to help me move efficiently and effectively. And that is what helped me. Yeah. I feel good about what I'm doing. Because I I got this journal from uh, Target a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Because of that same reason. Like, I was was doing too, like, so much and I couldn't remember things. And I was, for, oh. I was forget, I was missing flights. Like, oh, it was yeah. getting, it was getting yeah. pretty bad. I told Miles about this the other day, but uh, um, I like whenever I get an idea or whenever I like know, like, okay, I'm probably gonna forget this. I just yeah. write it down. I'll just yep. look back at it later. Yeah, but I've gone on the process too, man. I used to like, like when I would get thoughts, so I just write it down on whatever. Mm-hmm. And at the house, I'd have a pile, a pile of stuff, napkins and sticky notes, everything on the counter. Until I consolidate, but then, man, thank God for phone. So now I do like all that stuff, calendar notes mm-hmm. in my phone. So now I even do this now, like ideas I have, with, like speeches and different things, concepts. I'll just put that stuff down mm-hmm. in my notes, and it's organized. Yep. So I know I can always go back to it, and that's been like technology. That's the beauty of the technology oh, piece, yeah. like we talked about too, like um, going from, you know. Napkin to note, mm-hmm. if you will. <laughs> napkin from really paper napkin writing ideas down mm-hmm. in a restaurant or something. To actually, okay, well I can just put this in my notes mm-hmm. and I can always revisit it and you know, now it's on my phone, it's on my iPad, it's on my MacBook, it's wherever I'm at, I got it. Mm-hmm. And I think, man, that's that's the beauty of uh growing in technology. Oh yeah, yeah. I I was using the iCloud notes for a while and yeah. I really like how you can pull it up on your computer, right? Yeah, uh, you can pull it up yep. on your phone. You know, right. I'll write something in the moment on my phone, and then look back on it on the computer yep. later while I'm working. Exactly. That's yeah. exactly what I was saying, man. Like I do, like all of my books and stuff when I write. I mm-hmm. share this secret with you, by you getting the inside juice right here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, like all of my books and stuff that I wrote, and I've pretty much done that on my phone in my notes. Mm-hmm. And of course, you know, you got to go back and edit and all that stuff. But like the the brain dumping, the ideas, putting the concepts together. Like I've done that as it's come to me, as I've lived life, observed things. Mm-hmm. Like for example, like I'm sitting here looking at the setup and like the amazing beauty of 
So I had some ideas I'm gonna put in there on like you know, how life is beautiful and opportunities and like just different things. As they come to you, you can get it down and keep those things. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. When you're writing, are um, are you kind of brain dumping? When you come up with an idea, you're like, okay, I gotta write this down right now on my phone, and then you kind of look back and revise it later. Is that your writing yeah, process? Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm a, I'm a big on. I don't I don't think we can write about or speak me personally. I don't think I can write about or speak about something I haven't experienced. Mm -hmm. Right? I think that just me personally, like I'm just um I feel better when I know that it's organic and genuine. Yeah. Right? It flows better for me. That's yeah. just my personal so um what that does is that allows me to be aware of life things, mm -hmm. right? So as I'm going about, like I'll see different things and I notice, okay, man, this is good, right? I learned this from this, put this down, right? And so now that's my library, if you will. Like I can always go and reference that stuff as I experience it. But but with my writing, yes, I go back to my what I have, but then also I brain dump. So if I know that. I'm right about this, you know, the blue car that ran into the ditch, right? Mm -hmm. So then now as I experience life, I'm brain dumping, you know, different things about the car is this kind of car, it's a blue car, the paint was this kind of paint, you know, the the you know the the traffic sign like it wasn't a stop sign there so mm -hmm. he didn't know to stop he just ran into so like all of those different ideas I dump that stuff first mm -hmm. and then I'll go back and piece it together and make it flow yeah. so that's just kind of my my process gotcha gotcha you're trying to like uh, paint a picture paint a picture I really yeah. like that yeah like remember everything as well as you yep. can and as accurately as you can and and, and that that's one thing I learned from reading. Um, and, and listening to to books, you know, all your books. But I love when when you have people that can paint a picture, mm. right? So like, it, it really makes you feel like you're actually there. Mm -hmm. Like, like I love like reading a book where like, man, like, like I'm just going somewhere. Like, like man, it's like I'm actually sit right there with them. Mm -hmm. Like I can see that, you know. And so that's kind of what it is. It's like for me. How is your journey of a writer? I mean, like as you write. You know, six books. Yeah, I mean, yeah, at minimum six. I, I know you have a, some yeah, more. Yeah. Um, what are some of the improvements that you've had to make over time with that <laughs> you know, writing process? Lots of improvements. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just as you were uh, asking them, I actually said this to somebody the other day. I interviewed a guy, and we were he was a big he's a big time artist in Houston, mm -hmm. and we were talking about. Um, Shout out to Frankie Cardona. I want to make sure I send him a shout. Mm -hmm. And great guy. He actually has a mural uh, in uh, in the Woodlands area. Mm -hmm. That Astros mural that's over by uh, H-E-B, mm -hmm. uh, right over there. So okay. Y'all check it out when you get a chance. For sure. But he did that one. And that's how it came. Like, I saw it one day, and I just connected to him, reached out to him. But we were talking about the process of uh, being a creative and your growth. Mm -hmm. Right, so like people ask me, hey, you know, which book should I read of yours first? You know, just like man, I've been a part of sixteen, like written or published, been a part of like sixteen books. So it's crazy. Wow, congratulations! And so, yeah. Thank you. And so like people ask you, like, hey, don't get the first one. <laughs> You're like, hey, get the new one. <laughs> like the new one, I'm primed and I'm good. Right? <laughs> like, which man, I want to start listening to your podcast. Which one should I listen to? Don't go back to the first few. <laughs> right? Like these these new ones, they really good. Man, mm -hmm. I got angles. I got you know, great audio lighting, you yes, know, sir. for a dark yeah. guy. I need some good light, right? You know, like, man, I got all of that stuff now, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, yeah, man, it's just it's just the growth process. I've had to grow a lot uh, in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. I think that that's the beauty of it. And I think I said this to you when we were sitting up here. The beauty of it is that I feel like I haven't even scratched the surface on things that I can learn. Mm hmm I think that that's what makes it fun, yeah. right? I think when you can look at it as, okay, what can I learn just to have that continued growth? Yeah, yeah. they call that the, the Dunning-Kruger effect where you mm. start off and, uh, or you, you start off in a place of confidence and you feel like, you know, it can't be that bad. You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. You, start, you start off in your first book and it's like, okay, I can write. Like, it's not gonna be that bad. Yeah. Like, and then the more you learn about it, 
the more your confidence drops and you're like, okay, there's so much to learn. And then over time you kind of reach this kind of middle point of maturity yeah. where you're like, you know, um, there's still so much to learn, but then you feel confident about the improvements that you've made along the way. Yeah. I think, um, man, I've been, since I started this past, I started writing about five and a half years ago and I've been so busy I hadn't had the time to have a drop. <laughs> like I just, uh, I just, I mean, it's been nuts, man. Like just, just keep getting better. Like that's all I know. Just keep working, dog. Nice. Like it, like it, it's, it seems to be working. So just yeah, keep yeah, working, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> and so that's what it's been for me, man. Talk to me a little bit about public speaking. Yeah. And you know, like, what are some of the the same question I asked earlier with the writing, you know, what are some of the improvements you've had to make and what are some of the challenges? Because oh, I know public speaking is challenging. Oh, my gosh, man. I mean, you're getting all the insights today, but so I'll tell you this one, too. Man, really, I'm an introverted guy, mm -hmm. right? Like, um, like if, if you're hanging out with me, I might not say any more than 10 words. Like, I'm really liking, and I'm okay with that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm okay with who I am and... I'm comfortable with that in my skin, right? And so uh, <clears throat> speaking, like you really kind of have to be extroverted yeah. to, to, to be great at the craft mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. Or tap into some things which allows you to you know, come alive, and that's what I do. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but, man, it's the, same, it's the same thing. Like, you know, my first stuff that I did, oof. Don't look at that. <laughs> now, like, come check me out. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. it's that. And so, uh, yeah, man, I just, I don't know. I'll share this. So, like, man, I used to, like, just dump, <clears throat> like you said, write it all out, type it, uh, you know, and all it word for word. Like, I used to do all of that. But then I got to where, uh, you know, I've had to work on my means. Of, okay, then I just do bullets. Yeah. Right. Uh, then I worked on being better at telling stories. Uh, then so so it's all, it's always been something that I've improved on, uh, and continue to. I still do that. Like I mm -hmm. still like when I speak to this, I want to make sure I practice this. Try this out. Mm -hmm. And so it's like a game to myself. Like what you gonna do now, Chip? You know, like how you gonna get better now, right? Mm -hmm. And so I just continue to have that growth, and it makes me proud. Even like like today, there's some things. You know, that I wanted to make sure that I hit on or like different things technology wise that I'm trying to work on. So, man, it's just a continued growth mm -hmm. uh, to see that when I look back on it, although I don't want to look at that stuff, it also makes me proud to see where I've come from. Yep. Right. And the work that I've put into like it, like it literally I can see literally like the growth. I can literally see the growth. Mm -hmm. And so man, it's it's really cool uh to be able to do that. Yeah, I can I can speak from personal experience with like looking back on some of your old public speaking and just like yeah. it's such a hump to get over like looking at yourself on camera. Right. And um yeah. and also like listening to your own voice. Yeah man. and kind of things like like it's like watching film. It's like watching film and football. Exactly. I was waiting for you to say yeah. finish because I was going to say that. It's just like watching film. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like early in your career, you're like, oh, I don't want to watch. But then you get to where, like, no, I need to check it out yep. so I can see what I need to be better on. Mm -hmm. And it's a maturity. Like you said, it, yeah. it has to be – it's a maturity that comes with – I mean, it is what it is. The eye in the sky don't lie, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a maturity with, okay, well, let's check it out. Let's see what I need to be better on, and you can you can show yourself. Mm -hmm. So just so I don't I don't miss what you were saying earlier, if if someone were to be like, hey, Coach Baker, like, what's your public speaking process? You were saying, you know, you have your talking points, you write down bullets, and then you kind of go through those talking points. Is that yep, that's okay. exactly right? So I have a general theme. Um, I'm an acronym guy, so a lot of times I use acronyms mm -hmm. to communicate. I'm a simple concept guy, so uh, I may have one concept, have points off of that concept, and then tie it into how it applies. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's a lot of different ways that you can uh, organize your thoughts yeah. and convey your thoughts, mm -hmm. uh, and that's one thing I'm continuing to work on. Like I love watching speakers, I love watching the tape of myself, mm -hmm. so I can be better. 
You know, I, I did this. I said this. I moved this way. Man, you got to make sure you t- like like I love seeing that stuff because mm-hmm. it it allows me to be the best version of myself when I when I get opportunity to speak. Yeah. Are you ever? I mean, I find myself sometimes being when I watch myself just being overly critical of things, and I get kind of like. Um, so lost in the negatives that you know I, I don't look at the positives and I'll show my friend you know a clip of the podcast yeah. and I'm like that's that's good dude that's really good and I was yeah. like I thought it was terrible I thought it was right. horrible right. do you right. have that right. same experience or nah man I'm just too busy to think like that like I yeah, just yeah. I don't have time to I don't have time to like overanalyze like let me check it out what mm-hmm. I need to do give me two or three things I need to work on now I'm on to the next thing okay and I think that that's kind of been my process you know it's like you know watching the tape like bro we only have this many days to prepare for the next game mm-hmm. the next game's coming mm-hmm. so like I give myself a day to be in the moment yep. good or bad you know we won that's great okay I got another opponent to prepare for mm-hmm. you know we lost ooh what did I get but okay a day Okay, I got another one to pre- opponent to, pre- to prepare for. Yeah, I think that's the beauty of for me having a sports background is like it, it allows me to uh, adjust and move on. Yeah, I think that's a beautiful lesson too. Just like not only in sports but in life, like um, on the on the victories, you know, don't dwell too long on the victories, mm-hmm. right? Because the sun doesn't stop. No, the sun no. doesn't stop for no man. No, that's a good quote by. Uh, I don't think Kevin Hart came up with the quote, but I saw him say that. Yeah. Um, you know, like, like, and then if it's a loss, you know, don't take too much time to dwell on that either. Just, right. you know, wh- what did I do right? What did I do wrong? All right, move on to the next thing. You yeah. know, keep moving forward. And I think, I think the beauty, too, is even in those victories, like, there's always room for improvement. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, you can always find ways to learn. Yeah. I think it's about having the growth mindset. Yeah. What what exactly to you is growth mindset? Like, is it what we were talking about earlier with like kind of growing through your go through? Mm-hmm. It definitely is. I think yeah. it's definitely uh, having the mindset of saying, okay, in order for me to have growth, I have to have continued improvement yeah. to grow. And in order for me to have continued improvement to grow, I have to continually find things that I can be better on. Mm-hmm. Right, things to learn, and it's really kind of what we've talked about in the interview. You know, like those different processes of having growth and finding out ways to learn new things, and and, and that's really exciting. Like when you can do that, man, it, that is really really exciting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about your why. Mm. Why is having a why important? <sighs> Having a why is super important because um, when you face challenges, if it's just about you, mm-hmm. you'll give it up or quit, yep. right? But if you know that it's bigger than you and you have a why of why you're doing it, uh, if you know the why, the what, the how, the when, none of that stuff matters Yep. because you, you're tapped into your why. Mm-hmm. And how, like, how has your why changed as you've gone through life, you know, has it changed? Yeah, I don't. I don't know that it's changed. I think, um, you know, kind of like we talked about having the core values, core principles, mm-hmm. understanding to prioritize and making what's important. Like those things really haven't changed. Yep. Um, kind of the 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 how, uh, the when, mm-hmm. you know, the what, you know, some of that stuff is you know ever evolving. But the why is, man, just striving to make a positive impact, mm-hmm. you know, each moment of each day. And I'm truly grateful for the opportunities to do that. Yeah. And that's what I strive to do. Yeah, I remember uh, just thinking about, like, my why. That really helped me get through yeah. a lot of that that pretty grueling mm-hmm. weight training in high school. And then just in general, you know, like thinking if I'm kind of unmotivated that day or I don't want to do something, just thinking, okay, why? Like, what's my why? Like, why do I want to do this? You know, yeah. um, I don't want to look at, edit this clip like we were talking about earlier, but I enjoy this podcast. Like, I want to make it better. Yeah. You know, I want to um, I want to make it big enough to where, you know, I can 
maybe make money from it and then you know provide for people I care about and things like that it just kind of ties back to it's real motivating for sure well I hope this episode man sparks some of that for you <laughs> thank you yeah yeah yes sir I really like some of the insights that uh that you're given like the opus clips and things like that thank you yeah yeah it's, it. it's so many things um it's so much knowledge like I have my brother-in-law's in technology and you know, there's some people, and, and even like I tell you, like even like with this situation when we came in, like um, you know, I'm asking you like, what's your setup? Like, how you do this? What do you mm -hmm. use? For this? Because I'm always, anytime I get an opportunity to be in different environments, and I see that it's something different than what I'm accustomed to, then I'm striving to learn, right? And that helps me be better. Yeah, I, I'm a firm believer in the fact that. Everyone has something that they can teach you about. Oh, no matter. Doubt. Yeah, like you've been doing the podcast game, you know, seven months and or seven years and nine months longer than I have, right? <laughs> but um, there still might be things that I picked up from someone who's done it for. 20 years that yeah. they were given some of their insights and then I took that and yep. maybe you just yep. weren't able to hear it and then I give that to you right and I'm gonna even hit you with this you know just like you like you broke down the times and the years mm -hmm. but even though I've done that much longer like when I came in I was asking you questions exactly you yeah. know what I'm saying like I'm still striving to learn mm -hmm. too mm -hmm. and so I think that the beauty of that is like, we never want to get in a position where we feel like we know it all or yeah. we got it because when you feel like that somebody just beat you yeah and that's unacceptable yeah yeah here's another quote for you uh, from Seneca, mm -hmm. he said, oh, I'm a paraphrase here, because mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what yeah, he said. Yeah, yeah. But uh, basically along the lines of like, uh, a man cannot learn what he thinks he already knows. If you walk into a situation with a big ego, like, like you've been doing a long time, like you own the place, like no one there can teach you anything, mm -hmm. then you're not gonna learn anything. You're gonna yeah. stagnate. Yeah. And some of like the best learners that I've ever met especially being at UT, it's this huge university. There's some real good learners there. They're humble, and right. they're willing to listen to anybody. And if yeah. you've got an idea, it doesn't matter if you're in your first semester of college, yeah. or if you're a high schooler, or if you've been in the field for 40 years, they're gonna listen to you with the same amount of respect, yeah. and, and, and they're gonna ask you questions, right? I, I think that's, um, just hearing you talk about that, I think for me, that was a really cool, that's why I love the college environment. Because the college environment is conducive to growth. Mm -hmm. It's conducive to learning. It's conducive to developing quality relationships. Yep. Because like you got people that come from all walks of life, different ages, oh, yeah. races, whatever, backgrounds, beliefs, and you're all coming there for one cause is to learn. Yeah. Right, and I, I mean, like I love 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 that type of environment mm -hmm. uh because you have continued growth yeah and, and i'll even tell you you know fast forward you know some of my best friends or best opportunities that i've had have come from people that i've connected with in college mm -hmm. and built relationships like my i have a character development program and the the guy that the first school that i had it in was his school and he was my college teammate Right, like I have a contract with a company uh, in uh, <clears throat> California or West Coast in Nevada as well mm -hmm. uh, that I do like professional development, speaking, training for the company. And so, like that guy, he was my college teammate. You know, mm -hmm. he's like big guy in the company there. And so, like when I had my tore my ACL in college, he took care of me and made sure that I I got I ate and you know, all of those things. And mm -hmm. so. Like all of that stuff, man, opportunities bring opportunities like we talked about. Yeah. And when you treat people right and do things the right way, like again, we've said it a few times, organically those things are gonna come back to you. Yeah. Yeah, you talk about the college environment and I do wanna talk to you about your experience playing yeah. college football. Mm -hmm. um, where did you play exactly? I played at West Texas A&M, Division mm -hmm. II school in mm -hmm. the Panhandle up by, it's in Canyon, Texas, up by Amarillo. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what was that experience like? I mean, there's not a lot of people that, you know, get to play college football. 
Uh, tough? Yeah. <laughs> no. No, I think I think the first thing is, like, where I went to school, man, it was like a nine-and-a-half-hour drive from my hometown, yeah. still in the same state, right? Yeah. Like, that's how big Texas is, right? Uh, and it was it was different, you know, getting out of the box, going to an unfamiliar place. I knew I knew no one there, but there was opportunity to do something that I've always wanted to do. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it was neat, man. It was it was neat to be able to be around. At the time, I didn't know it. As I grew and got around more of those people, I was around some great people there. I was blessed to have some great coaches, great teammates. Um, like I said, still amazing relationships that I still have today. Mm-hmm. Um, learned a lot. College, um, and I say this a lot too, college showed me who I am. Mm-hmm. Right? It showed me that growing up I was taught some good stuff. Yeah. It showed me that all I needed to do was just hang on to that good stuff that I've been doing to get me there so far. It's the same stuff. Like that same stuff that you do you know, like the core common principles working hard. Like, do that in college, you're going to be all right. Yep. But then I really learned that, like, oh, I just do that in life. Mm-hmm. That's going to take me through life. It's the same stuff I still do today. And so, like, it really showed me lots about myself. I learned a lot about myself. Because, I mean, like, y'all, you know, y'all know, like, the first semester for sure, it's lonely. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, you, man, like, it's the, I even think I told Miles that when he went, like, man, it's tough. Like, that first semester, like, it's going to seem lonely, but just get there, put your head down, go to work, um, you know, learn what you're supposed to learn, and then that second semester, it'll get better. Mm-hmm. You know, you'll start meeting people, you'll know your way around, you know where you got to be, and then, uh, man, that's someone that next to me, it's live, let's go. Mm-hmm. Like, I ain't going home. <laughs> you know, like, man, you go, you coming? No, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not coming home. <laughs> right? But uh, it, it was great for me. It was a great experience. It taught me so much about life. It taught me so much about myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and it showed me that, like, I can do things independently on my own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, that, that kind of sense of independence I can yeah. also very, very much testify for. Um, I, in high school, I spent a lot of time alone mm. and home alone, and I just hated it in high school. I didn't like it. Yeah. And then I got to college, and um, then I was, you know, like in high school, like, yeah, I would be home alone a lot, but I, I was still able to go see my friends every day at high school. You spend seven, eight hours, you know, around people that you, you're closest to, but in college, it's different. Because like, you know, I'm I'm living in an apartment. Yeah. You know, I got my own place. Yeah, I figure like, it out, dog. Yeah, like I'm I'm yeah. like fully, truly alone. And yeah, like who you gonna no, no yeah. it's you. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean it was easy it was easy when I had a girlfriend, but then yeah. you know, like things don't work out, you you're single again and you're just alone. Yeah, you like no no, no it's you. It's just me. <laughs> and you get this sense like at first it kinda sucks, but then I kind of grew into enjoying it. Like I just yeah. now I like um, I was on a trip to San Francisco last week, and I got back and I just spent like four days just alone. And I was like mm. with my dog and I was taking care of my dog, but like I was just kind of alone and I, I was enjoying it. Yeah, and it was yeah, like yeah. Um, you have that sense of independence and you kind of you're just working on what you want to work on and that's it, man. Yeah, you, it's so cool. Like it's it's good to. Hear you say that too, um, because it's man, it's it, it can be tough, but I think that if you you know continue to have the right focus on what you need to focus on, then then you learn so much about yourself. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's adversity really does build character, and exactly. just having some time alone with your own thoughts. Yeah, is I think more people need that. More people need to go. Just go out camping and just be alone with your own thoughts for a couple of days. Come and back. I think too. Sometimes people don't really realize that they really they need that. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You're so caught up in like the rat race. You yeah. Know? You're just like moving on from thing to thing to task to task, and you yep. don't take a second to just, you know, what am I doing? Slow it down. What direction am I going? Yep. You know, like reflection. Yeah. You yeah. got the blinders on, and you just want to move forward, but maybe you're not mm-hmm. going in the right direction. Is yeah. kind of the way I see it. I love it, man. Um, so you mentioned that you injured your ACL mm-hmm. in college. 
What was that journey through injury like? I, I can say from personal experience, it's tough, especially when you got the expectations of teammates and things like that. Man, probably one of the hardest things I ever did in my life. Mm -hmm. and, and I say that because uh, what hurts you the most is not the injury. What hurts you the most is that um, it hits you in the heart, man. Yeah. But but then also it does something to your mindset too, right? And so people don't really, I think, really understand the depth of an injury. Like the depth of an injury, man, it cuts deep. Mm -hmm. Like like I tore my ACL, but like, man, I'm in a place on my own. Like I don't know what my future is gonna be. You know, like like I love this. Mm -hmm. You know, like this is every I've worked my tail off my whole life to do this. Uh, you know, and so like all of those things that you you consider in your heart and then in your mind, um, you really have to go back and make it simple, right? So that's why like doing the rehab is important. Yeah, I got to do rehab on my knee. I mean, I got to do rehab on my heart. I got to do mm -hmm. rehab on my mind, on my thinking, right? And so I learned to do, take just one step at a time. Like what, like we talked about, what can I control? Mm -hmm. what, what, what's out of my control, yeah. right? And I think when you do that, and I'll just go back again. Like, I don't know if you know, like I've had a hip replacement, right? A couple of both of them. Mm -hmm. And so like even in the surgery after that, like, I'm like, man, let's go, let's rehab, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I knew that by me attacking the rehab because of the knee experience, that I knew that on the other side of it I was going to be better, but just I just needed to just get rolling. Like, hey, we're going to have you in this rehab. We have you just, well, let's go. Like, uh, like somebody, somebody going to take me? Let's, let's get it. Let's go to work. Mm -hmm. Right, because I knew that I'm going to be better by the work that I put into it. Mm -hmm. But it took that first experience the need to kind of see but then also that experience helped me in life as well because there's some injuries that we're going to have in life yep. and injuries come in the form of you know breakups mm -hmm. tough relationships losing jobs you know, being in situations where people don't believe in you mm -hmm. uh, you know being like tough times in your life are those injuries right and you're going to have to do the rehab on your heart and your mind and I love how you're actively finding the good in yeah. the situation with your knee yep. to where you know you're like I've been through this before and I got through it so you attack that rehab with the hip hip replacement right yep. like you you have the right attitude going into yep. it you have this momentum right you have that confidence yep. and you just keep barreling forward you know I That's learned awesome. that from the knee experience but the weight room you know we talked about mm -hmm. it's the same thing like, bro, in order for me to move the weight, I got to move the weight. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't be afraid. Put it on there. Let's go. No shortcuts. Yeah, no shortcuts. I'm going to do it right. Put it on there. Mm -hmm. Let's move the weight. Let's go to work. Yep. You got me. You're here with me. Well, let's go. We're mm -hmm. good then. Mm -hmm. And so I think when you attack life in that manner, um, you get the maximum results from that as well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I... The Rock says that, or he, he said that in a podcast I was listening uh -huh. to. Um, everything comes back to the weight room, you know, like whether nice. you're not, you, you like, for everyone that plays sports, yeah. I mean, anyway, I've done a lot of sports, you know, jujitsu, wrestling, yeah. football, yeah. 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 track and field, MMA. It all, like, like when you're done with those sports, where do you go back to? You go back to the gym, you go back to lifting weights. And, I feel like it really teaches a lot of the lessons that you're talking about, you know? I'm glad you said that because, you know, we talk about, like, I dump stuff. Like, I have something in my deal. Life is weights. Mm -hmm. Weights is life. And, and, and like, all of those things that we talked about, uh, you know, there's times in life where like, you don't feel like doing it. Right. Yeah. You don't want to do it. Like, but, but you know that by going in there and going to work, attacking it, putting the weight on there, even when you don't feel like it, when you get done with it, you like the results. Yeah. And that's life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes you may not feel like doing whatever or going to work or, or, but at the end of the day, when you do those things, 
uh, the benefits far outweigh the whatever you propose in your mind the outcome could be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I am curious, like, what the training was like and what the day-to-day -day life was like being, you know, a, a college athlete. What was, what was that like? Like, man, they ain't. They ain't giving you that scholarship stuff for free. <laughs> like, you got to work, Jack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know the life. <laughs> like, you got to, like, that. I think that was the biggest thing that, like, really, really surprised me. Because, like, growing up as a high school athlete, I was blessed to have some older guys uh, at my school that played college. So in the summer when they would come home, I would work out with them. Mm -hmm. And so, like, the, the tempo, the intensity of what they did it was good for me because I kind of saw it, but then I would ask them, and I remember this. It's funny you asked me that question because I remember this asking them, man, what is just like, man, what is college football like? I remember being on the track. I can tell you where I was at when I asked them the question mm -hmm. because throughout my college days, even today, that still rings in my head. And so one of the guys said, man, it's going to be the toughest thing you ever did in your life, but it's going to be the best thing you ever did in your life. And I didn't understand that. Like, I didn't know what they meant until I actually got into it. Yeah. And so, like, on those tough days, we was having to do some crazy stuff I ain't never done before. Like, man, y'all trying to kill me, right? <laughs> you know, but I was thinking of the toughest thing, but it's the best thing. Okay, y'all said it's going to be the best. Okay, I guess I'll push through. Mm -hmm. All right, but just, man, like, I think I remember, like, like, I say two a days, but it was four days, right? Mm -hmm. So everything was calculated. Like you, I mean, like when I and that, that was it was like a strict regimen, right? Like breakfast at this time, mm -hmm. you check in, and you know everything is detailed. Like they make sure you eat your meals, mm -hmm. you weigh in, uh, you know, check your, you know. Um, uh, hydration level, like all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, this is like, like this is an operation, yeah. <laughs> right? Like yeah. this is like, like for real, like a, like a man, this is business. Mm -hmm. Like this is, it's no longer is the, like, hey, we go play, <laughs> play, have fun, play football. No, bro, this is business, yeah. right? And it's, a, and it's, it's cutthroat. Like if you don't do what you're supposed to do next, mm -hmm. like you out of there, like it don't matter. Like the, everybody is good, all this, all blue chip, all yep. everybody there is amazing, yeah. right? And so, like, even in the classroom, mm -hmm. right? And so, if you don't push yourself to up your game and be the best version of you, like I said, you either get better, or go home, and going home with an option. Yeah, yeah. Like everyone there was the best player on oh. their high school team. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. And so, man, just I, I just remember like, like seeing the schedule like the first time on paper, <laughs> like I was there, like. I'm like, wow, <laughs> you know, like, uh, like they told me, yeah. <laughs> but like when you see it on paper, like, bro, like, so like the only time I'm gonna get in the day is like a thirty minute lunch, <laughs> right? Like, uh, wow, <laughs> you know, yeah. and maybe a, and then well, actually it's an hour, but part of the hour is I'm gonna eat and I'm, gonna, I'm so tired I got to get a nap. Right <laughs> before we had to go back to meetings and then be on the field and then eat and then lift and then study. So like, like all of those things. But what it did though is um, along that discipline, it created discipline mm -hmm. too. Because there's a lot of guys that couldn't handle that. Yep, you know they couldn't just just do what you were told to do. Right, just show up, do what you can do right now. And then as you learn those things, man, it creates discipline in your life. Yeah. Yeah. What was the transition from, you know, playing college ball to now having a career with people? Like, um, I don't, I don't want to, like, say that you were, like, separated from other people, but it's a different world. You know, oh, like, right, people are yeah. telling you, you know, you got to do this at this time, this at that. Like you said, like, you have this tight schedule, and then all of a sudden you're just – kind of thrust to the world yeah. and you know like everything is on you now right you don't have a coach telling you you know you need to do this yeah. at this time yeah yeah so so um <laughs> i'm gonna go back to before college yeah i'm gonna go back to as a kid like my mom was my first coach so i had it at the house mm. and my mama didn't play like no nah, boy you're gonna do that <laughs> you know like so so i was blessed to have discipline growing up mm -hmm. 
like I didn't know how much that discipline was going to benefit me in my life. You know, I just thought, especially as I got to be a teenager, where I thought I knew things, right? Mm -hmm. As a teenager, you know things, right? <laughs> Crazy mom, mama tripping, she don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, buddy, right? Uh, but I was able to, as I got into that college situation, I was able to look back and like, oh yeah, maybe that lady was right. <laughs> she knew a little something. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's full. The story is full. Okay, that's okay because we're we're starting to get to the end, okay. so it'll be all right. So I, so I just figured, you know, man, like, uh, man, I, I, I've learned discipline as a kid. So really it wasn't, I mean, it was a lot, but it wasn't out of the comfort zone of having discipline in my life, mm -hmm. right? So I was blessed to have that. But then when I went into the world, um, the world was easy. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, uh, like, bro, like. Like, man, these people out here trying to take your head off, like, mm -hmm. trying to kill you. Like, they putting you through all of this stuff. Like, that's nothing. Like, com yeah. like life life is nothing compared to that stuff. Like, these, what, like all of this stuff I had to do just to prepare to get the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Right? And so I think that uh, in life, I was prepared for life. From the E plus E plus R plus A, yes sir, that we talked about, mm -hmm. and so when when you get to life, life is the is easy because that's really the fruit to the labor because I've put in the hard work yeah. to be there. Yeah, I talked about uh, that with a, a friend of mine who also did Big Five. Do you do you remember uh, Trayvon Hill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, he was talking about like some of his experiences. He does uh, shot put mm. for. Um, I forget what school he goes to, somewhere in Mississippi. And uh, Miles, do you remember what school he goes to? Uh, Southern Arkansas. Oh, Arkansas, okay, my yeah. fault. <laughs> Sorry, Trayvon. Um, but like we were talking about how, um, he was talking about like some of his struggles. I mean, dude, we made it through Big Five, we could do anything. Oh, yeah. And it's that same mentality where it's like, you know, you're just in this weight room and it's so grueling and you made it through all the training and you made it through the football, you made it through watching yourself mess up on film and yeah. your coach is telling, you're freaking, what, what were you doing, what were you thinking, yeah. all this stuff. Yeah. And you go through that adversity and everything else in life is just a little bit easier. Oh yeah, just, um, it makes you better. Um, you know, like we talk, discipline allows you the freedom to be happy. Mm -hmm. you know, it's important to make sure you just push yourself and learn the lessons what you're supposed to learn, show up every day, do what you're supposed to do, and in that you'll learn the important lessons. Mm -hmm. That's gonna help you later in life. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. That's why I talked about too, being grateful for what you have mm -hmm. and then realizing, okay, what am I learning today? Yeah. Right? You're learning that I can do tough stuff. Mm -hmm. Right? Like I'm learning, like I'm showing myself, like I can show up every day and just do hard stuff. Mm -hmm. Right? And so when you do that, it creates a mindset, like you're a tough joker, mm -hmm. right? So there's nothing in life, like I'm telling you, and I even tell guys this, you know, I've told them as players, I mean, there's nothing in life that you're going to face. That's t I mean, of course, like you have death in the family, those kind of things. Yeah. But for the most part, there's nothing in life that's going to be tougher than those situations like playing hot Texas football. Yeah. I mean, like you, emphasis it, on hot, yeah, hot, yeah, yeah, like like tough, hot, yeah, Texas football, mm -hmm. like bro, like it's it's nothing in life that's. I mean, it's not too many things that's gonna be tougher than that. That's gonna be more challenging yeah. than that in your life. Gotcha. What uh, what time are we at, Miles? Two o four. Two o four. You ready to call it? Yeah, let's get it, man. Get thank you so much for coming on. Man, thank you so much for I having appreciate me. appreciate it, yeah. I, I appreciate the opportunity. Um, uh, it's been great, man. Yeah. Again, just seeing the journey of what, what you're doing and, and have done. Um, so happy for you and thank grateful you. for the opportunity. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, the feeling is mutual. It's, it's yeah. great to see your evolution from kind of a teacher to more of just the influencer. And, yeah. and you're really getting your message out there to thousands of people. It's, yeah. it's really cool to see. Um, I want to give you 
kind of a pedestal here at the end of the podcast to kind of promote anything that you got going on, you yeah. know, like where can people find you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's new with Chip Baker, you know? So um, my social media is at Chip Baker, T-S-C, as in The Success Chronicles. All of my social media is that except for X. Uh, and it's Chip Baker 19. Mm-hmm. So, you know, feel free to reach out and check out some of the stuff. And, you know, all things positive. Mm-hmm. If you see something on there that you enjoy, that you like, you know, I ask that you just share it with somebody that well, it'll make a difference in their life. And so with me, um, you know, continuing to write books, uh, continuing to, to speak and pour into others um, and, and trying to make a positive influence, you know, my goals now, reassessing my goals is to do more so that I can do more. Mm-hmm. Right? And that's kind of my emphasis right now. You know, I want to, like, I'm involved in lots. I'm a board member of Fellowship of Christian Athletes North Houston. Uh, I'm a board member with uh, Mike Evans. I'm on his uh, board for what he does, you know, his family foundation. Grateful mm-hmm. for both of those opportunities. You know, but there's some groups, like I do a speaker series at Lone Star College, mm-hmm. um, you know, on Tuesday evenings. And so <clears throat> there's some groups that I speak to often, like kid groups, uh, community groups. And so I just I just want to do more so that I can do more. And so I say that because, you know, just looking for more opportunities to speak, corporate, train, uh, which what that'll do, it'll allow me the opportunities to you know, take some of those groups to professional sporting events and have some experiences that they haven't experienced before to provide those opportunities. So that's kind of the next phase of, of things that I'm working on right now. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Go get it. Yes, sir. Go get it.